I just hit the I just hit the record button, so this will be recorded. And uh, the email on oh, my name is John St. Clair. Welcome to Trail Talk. And if you haven't already done so, please um, mute yourself. I see that Julianne logged in, and I'm going to make her a co-host. Hi, John. Hi, Hi all. Okay, you are now co-host. So. Um, Trail Talk is a once a month Zoom event that we've been doing since December of 2020. And all of the Trail Talk sessions have been recorded starting, I believe, with January. I don't think we recorded the December one. And um, they are available on the San Gregorio Chapter YouTube channel. And I just put into the chat section the uh, link to that YouTube channel. Plus, you should have gotten a reminder email from me this afternoon. And in that email, it also has a link to the um, San Gregorio chapter uh, YouTube channel. So you'll be able, if, you, if something happens, you can't watch this whole session tonight. Or if you want to see past sessions, you can go to the uh, San Gregorio chapter YouTube link and watch any of them starting with, I believe, January. And normally we have our um, trail talks on the third Wednesday, but this one is a, it's on the last Wednesday of the month. And um, next month we'll be back to third Wednesday. And I believe it's going to be uh, Backpacking 101. Correct. And uh, looking forward to that one. Um, I think that's about our third 101 talk <laughs> where we give the basics for doing something. And um, so I think everybody at this point is muted. The way we're gonna do questions is write them in the chat section. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little talking bubble icon above the word chat. And if you click on that, it creates a little box where you can send a question to everyone. That's the default. And the host and co-host will be monitor monitoring that and re relay questions to David uh, if it's pertinent to what he's just talked about, and then he can answer the questions. Otherwise, wait till the end. And at that point, when he's done talking, you can unmute yourself and actually verbally present a question. Um, and or we will relay accumulated chat uh, section questions to David. So um, at this point, I'm going to um, introduce Julianne Anderson, who is, uh, along with Carla Kellums and I, are the committee members that organize and produce the Trail Talk series. And Julianne will um, introduce our speaker. And let's see if I can find Julianne to spotlight her. <laughs> let's see, I can take the spotlight off me, I think. Ah, where am I? Remove spotlight, there we go. Now, Julianne, uh, say something and I'll see you. I'm right here, John. <laughs> okay, so I will now spotlight you and you can introduce David. Wow, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. And as John has so ably mentioned, uh, our special guest this evening is David uh, Money Harris, uh, who has very kindly offered to, to speak um, about hiking and about his authorship and co-authorship of numerous hiking guides. Um, the latest of which is Trails of the Angeles, um, which was formally uh, written by John Robinson and then Harris and Robinson wrote it together. And now uh, David Harris has written the latest edition. Uh, a wonderful book just out this March, brand spanking new. So I encourage you to get it and freshen up your, uh, your trail guides of uh, the Angeles Crest. Um, David Harris is the author of many Southern California hiking guidebooks, including Trails of the Angeles, which I just mentioned, San Bernardino Mountain Trails, the classic, 
uh, which he's inherited uh, from Robinson. Uh, a Foot in a Field in the Inland Empire, which I love and I have dog-eared uh, for years now. Uh, a Foot in a Field, Los Angeles County. A Foot in a Field, Orange County. 101 Hikes, Southern California. Day and Section Hikes, Pacific Crest Trail, Southern California. And a free iPhone guidebook application called eTrails. He is also a professor of engineering at Harvey Mudd College, where he has taught uh, for over 20 years, since 1999. David was a Sierra Club trip leader with the peak climbing section of the Loma Prieta chapter in the 1990s. He enjoys hiking with his three sons. Uh, his, longest, his youngest son, Benjamin Frodo, I love that, uh, is 10 years old and recently hiked 100 miles uh, with David on the Pacific Crest Trail. So David, uh, what a wonderful background you have and we're so lucky to have you this evening. So. Uh, with that, uh, take it away. Thank you. I'll uh, share my screen here. Um, oops. Let's share, share this. Is it coming through well? Great. All right. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Julian and uh, John and Carla for the invitation. It's uh, wonderful to get to uh, chat with the club and see some familiar faces again too. Um, this talk uh, grew out of a talk I gave uh, during Earth Week uh, last spring to uh, students at the Claremont Colleges and they were looking for a talk on uh, the top trails to visit if you have four years living in Claremont. So the focus is kind of on the, the first top trails to visit. I know we have a ton of experience in the Sierra Club group. And so probably many of you have hiked most of all of these trails and maybe it will give you some fun memories and maybe it will uh, give you an idea for another one you'd like to go visit. Um, but I'm sure I can learn a lot about these trails uh, from many of you too. Um, I've been really fortunate uh, since 2005 to get to follow in the footprints of two of the great Southern California writers. Uh, John Robinson retired from guidebook writing in 2005, and by a lucky series of events, I got asked to update uh, trails of uh, San Bernardino Mountain Trails which got me into doing Southern California guidebooks. And once you do one, they want you to do more. Uh, so the Inland Empire, I put my field in the Inland Empire was my second book. And I agree that's, uh, that's got so many amazing trails. There are about 250 trips in the book and every different ecosystem, such variety and such grandeur. We're really lucky to live close to all these places. Um, Jerry Shad unfortunately passed away uh, too young, and he asked me to pick up uh, many of his books. So I um, got to do other Foot and Field series books and the um, next edition of 101 Hikes in Southern California is going to be coming out. Um, it's uh, going into copy edit soon, so it'll probably be coming out within the next year. Anyway. Um, if you have questions about specific hikes, uh, please uh, do jump in on those as we talk about them, and otherwise I'll take more general questions up here. So here could be a tick list. If you're looking for a set of great hikes um, to experience the diversity and amazing uh, parts of Southern California, this you won't go dis really disappointed from any of these. Um, Mount Baldy, right above us, uh, above my house. Um, San Bergoglio and San Cinto, the three saints, are um, the highest mountains in Southern California. Uh, the Wonderland Traverse in Joshua Tree goes through six miles of the most rugged country in the Wonderland of Rocks. And uh, if you like rock hot, it's a real hoop to go see that area. Uh, the California Riding and Hiking Trail is 38 miles across Joshua Tree and a great way to tour the park. Uh, Palms to Pines is one of my favorite in the Santa Rosa Mountains. 
uh, descending from Highway 74 down Palm Canyon. Now, Trans Catalina Trail gives you a grand tour of Catalina Island. The Mount Low Railway is one of my favorite in the San Gabriel foothills. Uh, Big Bear has a ton of great hikes, and it's really hard to choose among them, but uh, Gray's Peak is uh, certainly a strong contender. Um, in the local foothills um, at the eastern end of the San Gabriels, uh, Marshall Canyon is one of my favorites. Uh, Santa Monica Mountains have a ton of great hiking, and Sandstone Peak, I think, is one of the biggest bangs for the, the buck. Uh, down in the Cleveland National Forest, uh, the San Juan Trail has a great deal of variety, and it's also a great trail if you enjoy mountain biking. Uh, it was too hard to pick just one beach hike, so uh, Crystal Cove and the Hoyer Shores are both outstanding uh, beach hikes. And then um, granddaddy of them all out here at the Pacific Crest Trail. So uh, going into a little bit more on each of these, uh, this is the Devil's Backbone on Mount Baldy. Uh, there are many different routes you could do on Mount Baldy. Uh, one of my favorites is to go up to the Manka Platte parking area. Uh, you don't even need a forest adventure pass to park up there. And hike up past the waterfall. Uh, watch carefully for the turn onto the um, Baldy Bowl Trail and follow it up past the Sierra Club Ski Hut and around the bowl to the summit. And then you can come down uh, the Devil's Backbone here. Uh, this is one of my sons on the backbone. And um, then either walk down the road from the ski area, or if the knees are feeling beaten up, you can take the lift down. Um, I might as well add here that uh, one of the joys of all this hiking and all these books has been the opportunity to get my sons into the wilderness so much. They're now uh, 16, 12, and 10. And they've been coming with me since they were infants. And uh, the youngest one, um, uh, we were in Joshua Tree this spring, and he did the Wonderland of Rocks Traverse and loved that. And um, then we did Quail Mountain and came back out after dark and saw people in their tents along the California Riding and Hiking Trail. And he must have decided that was really romantic. He, he loved seeing the lights of people in their tents, and he asked if we could do that and hike the whole trail. So uh, three weeks later, we were doing uh, 38 miles. That was his first big backpacking trip, and he insisted on carrying his pack the whole way. Uh, he got um, I think his feet grew enough on that trip. He started pounding the front of his uh, shoes, and he had to cut the toes of his shoes off, which just added to the adventure for him. And he had so much fun with that that he asked to go to Oregon with me and join me for 100 miles of that Pacific Crest Trail. So um, these trails, some trails are short. And in my youth, I don't think I would have paid them much attention. But the chance to go out and do five miles with my family is as great a joy as anything else. Um, so each, each trail has its own special place. San Gorgonio is another of the big three. Here's a picture right after a uh, winter blizzard. And um, I think this is a really neat view because it emphasizes the cirques. Uh, San Gorgonio is the southernmost glaciated peak in uh, North America, or at least in California during the Ice Age. And um, those cirques, you can see the characteristic carving of the glaciers sitting up there and then carving out the bowls. Um, so there are a bunch of good trails on this one as well. Uh, the Vivian Creek Trail is a uh, classic. It's uh, 16 to 18 miles. Um, the South Fork Loop is another great way to go. It's slightly longer and slightly less elevation gain. Coming in from the South Fork Trailhead, and you can go up by uh, Dollar Lake and down by Dry Lake and tour the north side of the mountain. Um, or uh, I took my kids and we did a traverse over the mountain for the car shuttle. Um, this uh, this summer. And uh, San Gregorio gets you up high enough that you get into the uh, limber pines and the lodge poles, which are just gorgeous trees up top and then above tree line. San Jacinto, the third of the big three, uh, another gem. Uh, my favorite route on this one is to make a loop on the peak uh, from the Humber Park, uh, go up to 
the um, saddle junction up the Devil's Slide Trail, and then uh, hike and circle the mountain. So go up on the east side um, and climb to the peak, and then come down the west side through the Little Mountain Valley, and uh, then follow the Pacific Crest Trail back uh, by Strawberry Junction and loop back down to Devil's Slide Trail where we started. Uh, but all the routes on this are very fun as well. Uh, here's some pictures from the Wonderland Traverse in Joshua Tree. This one is only six miles, but it's uh, um, one of the harder hikes in this list, perhaps, because you're uh, on these boulders from car to house size, uh, having to hop between them in places. And um, it really takes you into that part of the Wonderlander rocks. If you've ever I hiked or climbed around the periphery of it and wondered what's inside. The first time I wondered what was inside, I was on a uh, Sierra Club trip uh, camp out in Indian Cove. And uh, a group of my friends who were hardcore Sierra climbers set out early in the morning and they didn't make it back to camp that night. And um, my friend and I set out the next day and we thought we were hot stuff and uh, we could do anything out there. And we ended up spending at least 12 hours trying to circle through the Wonderland of Rocks without any sort of guide, just uh, following the map as best as we could. Um, and this Wonderland Traverse is nice in that it follows a weakness uh, through a drainage, and um, it's a fairly well-defined route. You're less likely to get lost. Um, my friends didn't make it out that second morning uh, after an unplanned night in the Wonderland, um, and it's just such wild adventure. There's a, a little fort along this route uh, known as Obayoyo. People have uh, stacked up wood over the years, and um, there's sometimes a little register in there you can sign up. The California Riding and Hiking Trail was a predecessor to the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, originally, it was intended to go the whole length of the state, and the planners made a serious mistake of not getting a uh, right of way for the trail. So that over time, as land passed through hands, um, sections of the trail that had been passable became impassable, or it lost access, and the trail became fragmented into short sections. But one of the best remaining sections is the 38 miles through Joshua Tree National Park, from uh, Black Rock Campground to the uh, north entrance near 29 Palms, and it tours a bunch of different uh, portions of the park. Uh, I think the park near Black Rock has the most lush desert vegetation. It's probably the most interesting to go through. Um, but it can be done as anywhere from a two to a five day backpacking trip. Uh, this was a unique Joshua tree, almost a rainbow shape. Uh, and it was here the first time I hiked it, and unfortunately it had burned by the second time I came through this spring. Um, so well, uh, if you do the riding and hiking trail, one of the logistics is um, stashing water. And um, there are a number of trailheads along the way where you can leave water. But I would suggest checking in with the rangers first, because um, at one of the trailheads where I left water two days before the trip, uh, among a big pile of many other people's water, um, all of that water was gone by the time we got there. Unfortunately, we were carrying extra, but it could have been pretty exciting. So then uh, the Santa Rosa Mountains near Palm Springs have such a diversity of interesting places, rock formations, uh, oases hidden away here and there, crazy cactus. And if you had to pick just one, I think uh, Pines to Palms is maybe the most satisfying way to get to know the area. It'll your appetite to go back and see other places. Um, this one is a little bit logistically tricky because it's about 15 miles long and you have to set a car at a hermit's bench on the Indian reservation and then bring another car around to Highway 74. Um, you, in the morning you have to put your first car right when the hermit's bench opens and you've got to get out by uh, late afternoon when the uh, trailhead closes or they'll uh, lock up your car and scold you. Um, so you've got to move reasonably quickly on this one. 
but it takes you from the high country below Toro Peak and below the Desert Divide, all the way down through several palm oases and meat cactus and creek at the bottom and uh, come out at Hermit's Bench. Another uh, great uh, moderate backpacking trip, uh, the Trans Catalina Trail. Uh, this is a funny trip because very few miles of this trail are all that good. A lot of them are on dusty fire roads. Some of them are just really steep up and down through burnt grass. But somehow the sum of the whole is way more than any of the parts. And altogether, it's a really satisfying trip. Um, these pictures are some of my favorite portions. Um, coming down to um, Little Harbor here. Uh, that was one of my sons when he was 12 with his monkey in his backpack. Uh, backpacking, um, and there's a great campground there on the beach. Um, another of the beaches at the east end of the island has a view across the channel to um, Palos Verdes, an incredible sunset for sleeping in the sand with the waves lapping right outside your tent. It's, uh, there's nobody else out there except the backpackers. This one takes a bit of logistics. You have to get your permit to hike the Trans Catalina Trail from the Catalina Conservancy. And you also have to get campground reservations, which they charge a fair amount for. Um, and at some of the more remote campsites where there's no water, uh, they will truck in water for you, uh, again, with advanced reservation on the campsite. But uh, this one had been little known, and it's become quite popular in recent years. So getting a permit is taking more advanced planning now, but highly recommend. On the west end of uh, the San Gabriel's, there's a marvelous network of trails above the uh, Pasadena area. And it's really hard to choose a favorite from among these, but uh, Mount Lowell Railway is certainly a, a strong contender. Um, this trip takes you up past Echo Mountain and then uh, looping around uh, inspiration point, and you can go up to Mount Low uh, Campground, where there used to be a hotel. Uh, there have been grand ideas of hospitality and uh, hotels and um, taverns and viewpoints and funicular railways and so forth back in the day. And uh, most of that has long since burned, but um, still has great views and really satisfying. Big Bear. <laughs> is laced with trails around all the different sides of the um, lake. On the west end uh, is Gray's Peak. And this is just a beautiful area through the forest and then uh, some interesting uh, granite boulders near the top. Uh, here is my oldest when he was uh, six months or so um, out uh, with his binky and his ice axe. And then uh, my middle one uh, this past fall. Uh, went up to the top and we got to hike down after sunset. We really enjoyed the night hiking. The trail there is a well marked and really good. So it's a fun uh, moonlight descent. And the uh, foothills at the east end of the San Gabriel's, uh, we've got the uh, Fremont Wilderness Park, which is tremendously popular and pretty overused. Uh, but Marshall Canyon, I think, is prettier and uh, doesn't have a parking fee. and uh, is less crowded. Um, so I really like uh, walking under the oaks in Marshall Canyon. There are a bunch of different loops you can make. Um, not all that well marked, so bring a map. Uh, LA County I came through and put up uh, all sorts of trail signs, including some of the most absolutely impressively useless trail signs, or trail maps you've ever seen, that, for instance, show about a quarter mile of the trail not showing what it's connected to. <laughs> no, no explanation of why you would make that trail sign, but um, it is a map. Uh, anyway, uh, this can be fun on uh, a misty day as well, where you feel like you're on some place out of Tolkien walking through the trees. Santa Monica Mountains have a bunch of great trips. It was hard not to put the uh, Santa Monica Backbone Trail in there. I certainly love that one too, but it doesn't yet have campsites along its full length. So the logistics are pretty hard to backpack that one. 
a portion of that backbone trail goes through the sandstone peak area uh, near Point Magoo. And uh, this is misnamed. It's actually volcanic peaks. There's no sandstone up there. These are cores of old volcan volcanic formations. Um, but uh, really interesting rock formations and great views out over the ocean, over town. The uh, Cleveland National Forest, um, Orange County, uh, has uh, enormous web of trails. A lot of places you can go explore for a long day. Uh, for a moderate trip, uh, the San Juan is a nice trail. It has uh, just 500 feet of gain and then uh, 2,000 feet or so of downhill. And the mountain bikers love it. Sturdy ones bike up the uphill and then turn around and bike back down it. Um, I uh, hiked up and then rode my bike, left my bike at the top and rode my bike down. <laughs> but it's uh, got all these twisty trails through the trees and uh, roots and rocks and um, lots of wildflowers. So lots of stuff to see. We have a bunch of great beaches in Southern California and um, two of the longest and um, most continuous peaks hikes one of them is Crystal Cove in Orange County in State Park. And here you can walk uh, up to four or five miles along the beach. And then if you want, you can uh, go back up on the bluff and walk up to that far back along the sea cliffs. Uh, it's a good place to watch the whales. There are some small tide pools. Uh, the sand is really pretty. Some parks are pretty crowded, but other parks you'll have more to yourself. Uh, La Jolla Shores. From uh, La Jolla Beach uh, to um, um, oh, the trees. Um, spacing right now. Um, anyway, to, Torrey uh, Pines. Torrey Pines, thank you. Thank you. Um, Torrey Pines State Beach. Again, uh, is about five miles of beach. This is all under high sea cliffs. Uh, so the only way to get to a lot of this is on foot. And um, many places you're by yourself. Um, parts are on Black's Beach, which is a fairly colorful beach to walk across. Um, and then you end at the north end by uh, Flat Rock. When the tide's low, it's neat to go out and uh, go under the rock. Or um, when it's higher, you pass um, over the rock at this viewpoint. And then uh, one more, uh, the Pacific Crest Trail. My publisher asked me to do a book on day and section hikes on the Pacific Crest Trail back in 2007 or so. And at the time, uh, kids were little, and I thought there was no chance I'd ever get to do the whole trail. But this is a dangerously addictive trail. Uh, when you start doing a trip, you want to do another. And then you start thinking, well, what if it just kept going? Um, can I make it to Mexico? Can I make it to Canada? And um, I had the good fortune in 2012 of uh, getting to start on the trail. I hoped to make the whole thing, but by the time I made it to Tahoe, I was thinking about my kids a lot more than the trail and figured it was time to get off. Uh, since then, I've been a section hiker and I got to do Northern California and then in 2017, Washington. And uh, this past month, I got to hike most of Oregon, except about 100 miles of it that was closed with some of the fires. So this uh, gives you such a um, diverse set of um, different kinds of country from the chaparral and the desert and the high Sierra, the forests in Northern California and Oregon, the volcanic country, the North Cascades, uh, lakes and uh, streams, and uh, just so much different, beautiful territory. And um, the, uh, the people you meet, it's, it's really a pilgrimage. A lot of people uh, set out on this pilgrimage, and you can't do it alone. You're dependent on the kindness of strangers. Uh, there's so many people who give through hikers a ride to town or uh, help them uh, when something goes wrong. And um, it really uh, has restored my faith in people, the, the kindness that I've experienced on the trail. Uh, and then I think my favorite part of this whole thing is that. 100 miles I got to do with my son this summer. Um, and just seeing him uh, 
fall in love with the chair and uh, learn his way around the outdoors. And it's funny how kids are. Um, every kid I've met on this trailer, the fair number of families I've seen, but surprisingly young kids. And the elementary school age kids love to learn the names of all the hikers they meet. And then when they come to another group, they'll introduce a new hiker to everybody who's in that group, call out everybody's name. They like to point out where the nice campsite is, where they get water, this and that. And they're, they're so funny. But um, it's, it's really cute. Um, so that was on the trails. I promised to say a little bit on fire ecology, but maybe are there questions or discussion about trails first? We've got we've got a number, uh, David, and, and perhaps you can just take a moment to comment. Um, starting with your uh, Joshua Tree National Park, um, any suggestions for easy backpacking trips? Um, uh, Boy Scout Trail, um, uh, California Riding and Hiking Trail. Where would you suggest people, for, even with families like you, uh, could have a, a an easy sort of overnight or weekend backpack in, in Joshua Tree? Yeah, um, so I think one of the most beautiful stretches is from Covington to Black Rock. It, uh, it's roadless in between, and it really feels remote, even though it's about you know, it's a little less than 10 miles. So um, getting to Covington is a little bit of an adventure. It's a dirt road. It's passable by most two-wheel drive vehicles as long as it hasn't washed out recently. Um, but some people find it a little bit of an adventure just to drive up that road. And if you're able to set up a car shuttle, um, take one car to Covington, leave the other car at Black Rock. And um, with 10-ish miles, you can go in five miles the first day. Uh, with family, it's a good one for kids. And you'll be in interesting uh, country, all the yuccas and cashew trees, and, this in Molina, um, find a place to camp. Um, there's some good washes in there, and then um, continue out the second day. The uh, Boy Scout Trail is certainly a popular one, and that connects from uh, the main park road uh, across to Indian Cove. Um, I don't think the scenery is quite as interesting mile for mile, but it, um, it gets a lot of use. Um, Quail Mountain is kind of a fun area too. And um, you could go all the way to the mountain or you can uh, go and camp at the base of the mountain and come back. So that could be an out and back on the riding and hiking trail where you don't need a car ship. A uh, couple of other questions um, similar. Uh, we're going to be hearing in October from one of the staff members of the Catalina Island Conservancy about the uh, Trans Catalina Trail and hiking and backpacking in Catalina generally. Um, what are your favorite portions of the Trans-Catalina Trail and what are your favorite backpacking destinations? Ah, um, so from um, two harbors going west and uh, camping out on the beach out there is gorgeous. And you can make a loop and come over um, the Starlight Peak um, on uh, that, that end of the island if you're looking for maybe a 20 mile loop. Um, on the um, west end, uh, just a hike from um, Avalon up um, the Hermit's Gulch and out to um, Lone Tree Point is just about uh, about six miles round trip. Uh, that's more of a day hike, but um, that's uh, one of the nicest sections of the trail out there. Um, going to Little Harbor. Little Harbor is another one of those best campsites in Southern California. And uh, logistics of getting there is a little complicated. You could come in from uh, two harbors and there's a fair amount of up and down on the trail in from there. Um, you can also get a um, shuttle on their bus to airport in the sky and hike from the airport down to two harbors. That's a really nice um, 12 mile or so round trip and can be done some overnight. 
Um, if any of you are pilots, you can also fly into that airport. And it's uh, some of the best airplane hiking opportunities in Southern California. Uh, one final, um, have you hiked or uh, backpacked in the on the trails above Crystal Cove in that back country there during the winter? Um, so I, I've hiked all the trails above Crystal Cove. There's a backpacking site that uh, seems to be pretty popular. It's a good deal of use. Uh, I've always been day hiking through there. And I can't uh, figure out why I would want to carry a massive pack full of water up to the dry camp up there. But everybody's different. And the people who like it seem to really like it. Um, I, that area has been burned. And to me, it's not as pretty as it used to be. Uh, and actually, in 101 hikes in Southern California, I took out a hike on the inland side of Crystal Cove, and I replaced it with a hike down in the Laguna Coast Wilderness Park for this upcoming edition. Uh, because I think the Kahuna Coast is prettier now for a casual hike. Okay. Okay. Carla, um, uh, any, any questions on your end? No, I'm good. Thank you. I, I see a question that says, where is the trailhead for Marshall Canyon? Where's the trailhead for Marshall Canyon? So, ah, there are multiple places you can park for that one. Um, the um, my favorite one is the equestrian staging area. Um, so you go all the way up to the uh, top of um, the canyon. And um, it's kind of a weird start. It starts past the um, sewage treatment plant and uh, past uh, prison camp. <laughs> but as soon as you get past those, suddenly you're in the woods and uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, you can also start on the main road down below the equestrian area, and there's a whole spider web of trails uh, through that area going uphill. I saw a bobcat in there one time. The wildflowers can be really good. And there's another shorter loop you can do uh, starting in a residential neighborhood. Um, there's a little open park area uh, by some power lines, and uh, you follow the power lines a bit and then drop down into the canyon. And it goes past a magical section of the canyon that's tucked in right next to the golf course. You seem like you're right by all these golfers, but you can feel like you get lost in the canyon um, in this beautiful patch where everything else is hidden from sight. I don't see any other questions. All right, well, I could uh, change to uh, fire for a little bit because we've been witnessing um, many of the state's largest wildfires uh, in recent years. Um, since 2003 or so, we've had a series of catastrophic fires and um, some of the worst ones in, in the most recent years. Uh, the station fire burned um, nearly half of the San Gabriel's and then the Bobcat fire burned a good portion of what was left. And uh, this has been driven by a number of factors. Uh, climate change is certainly a, a factor. Um, air pollution has turned out to be a major factor in the desert. And um, it's, um, I didn't understand at first how climate change would affect our mountains. I sort of had an incremental mind, model in my head that maybe the tree line on average goes up a certain number of feet each year. And gradually the divide between chaparral and forest gets higher as the climate gets warmer. But what I'm seeing really happens is um, nothing changes and then you get a catastrophic wildfire. And after that wildfire, chaparral grows back to a much higher elevation than it used to. And we've seen after the station fire, uh, loss of a lot of trees. Um, and I feel we're going to see the same thing in the San Gabriel Wilderness with the Bobcat fire recovery. Um, in Joshua Tree, uh, things are a bit different. Um, Joshua Tree used to be uh, fairly much sand and cactus in Joshua trees. And uh, you get the lightning storms in August, 
and uh, thunder, a lightning bolt would set a Joshua tree on fire and it would burn to the ground and that would be it. But over the past century, the um, nitrogen from smog in Los Angeles has uh, blown east on the prevailing winds out over the desert and it's uh, settled into the soil and nitrogen is a fertilizer. So it's actually fertilized the soil in the desert such that invasive grasses now grow much more easily than they used to. And as a result, when there's a lightning strike and it sets a tree on fire, that sets the grass on fire, and then the whole valley burns up. And the rangers are deeply concerned about this. Uh, they've lost multiple valleys of Joshua trees, and they fear in this century that Joshua trees will become a rarity rather than the dominant um, plant out in many parts of the desert there. We had the same thing happen up on Sima Dome in Mojave National Preserve recently. Um, here's uh, some pictures before and after. Um, on the left was a portion of the California Riding and Hiking Trail in uh, Covington Flat area uh, back in oh, probably 2007 or 8. And then on the right was after the Covington fire, uh, the Joshua trees in the valley a large portion of them are charred. And then at the bottom is the same area um, this spring. And we see that um, most of those Joshua trees are now just on the ground or they're standing uh, relics. Um, but uh, we're getting a lot more um, uh, juniper, for instance, growing back instead of the Joshua trees returning. So this is tough to see in the National Park. And the rangers really don't have any idea of how to stop this yet. Uh, there's research in the area. Um, and the um, um, oh, um, desert um, ah, um, I'm not expressing my name on the uh, um, Conservancy at Joshua Tree. Um, anyway, uh, they've been the, uh, the Mojave Desert Desert Land Trust. Mojave Desert Land Trust. Thank you. Yes, they just sponsored a, a desert hiking event this spring that my my kids enjoyed being part of. Um, they've got a nursery and have been able to successfully grow Joshua trees in activity, which. Um, has been very difficult in the past. So there's some hope that they might be able to grow seedlings and start to receive trees in some of these areas that they're um, This is a picture of the uh, Bobcat fire uh, picking up San Gabriel King, uh, the West Fork um, um, Bear, or Bear King in the West Fork area, near where the fire started um, about a year ago. And um, about a third of the hikes in the trails of the Angeles right now are uh, impacted by this fire. Uh, there's some closures, and the Forest Service now is closing a lot of these areas until enough chaparral grows back that ATV riders might be tempted to carve new trails in the burn zones. Um, thankfully, a lot of the impact is fairly light, but here in Bear Canyon, uh, it was just burned to the ground through this whole area we're looking at, um, looking up towards Mount Williamson up at the top. And let's see if I can uh, get a little bit of an aerial picture. Is this playing okay for everybody? Yes, I can see it. All right. So uh, my son strapped a GoPro beneath the wing of our plane and uh, made this video and he uh, sped it up. So it looks very dramatic like we're flying all crazy, but it's actually a much more sedate flight than it looks from this. So here's coming around up uh, the east fork of the San Gabriel River, past Baden Powell, 
flying over the Vincent Gap Trailhead and down uh, the Manzanita Trail towards uh, South Park Campground. And uh, this area was all east of the burn. Then uh, the burn is starting up ahead uh, here, looking in the Devil's Punch Bowl. Uh, we saw that first hill burned, and there was some burn in um, this uh, South Fork Trail. There's a closure over um, everything east of Ben Pal. And um, you see, most of the fire here was really spotty. They're just small patches that burned. So thankfully, I think this area will recover pretty quickly. It's some of my favorite country up near the Angeles Crest. And I think it will come back well. But then uh, down uh, north of Burkhart Saddle, uh, Burkhart Trail and going down to the Punch Bowl again, burned quite severely. Um, and this becomes a little hard to follow, but again, um, the area, um, by the west fork of the San Gabriel River and um, north side of Mount Wilson um, burned pretty badly and uh, through the San Gabriel wilderness uh, burned quite severely. Now, there aren't a lot of trails in, into that area, um, but, but that would be an interesting recovery. Um, so that's kind of what I had to share, but um, I, I feel very lucky to have gotten to see all these places and follow in the footsteps of some giants and learn a lot. And I continue to learn every time I go out. Um, and maybe some of you have things you'd like to share that you, know, you don't know about these trails or um, other favorites you'd like to share. Uh, David, um, while we're waiting for people to kind of formulate their thoughts about that, tell us about writing a guidebook. What was it like working with John Robinson? What was what is it like going through and drafting and then ed editing a guidebook? How how do you do that? Yeah, um, so it's um, a lot of meticulous detail. Nothing's very hard, but there are a lot of details to get right. So uh, John Robinson had retired from guidebooks in 2005, and a fellow who was going to update um, San Bernardino Mountain Trails had a, a back injury. And so the editor at Wilderness Press called me up and said, do you be interested in updating this? And um, by the way, we'd like it done in three months. So on that schedule for that first book, all I got to do was uh, drive to the trailheads of the hikes and then look at the ones where it looked like something had changed and uh, re-hike that part. Um, but um, um, Robinson is an amazingly poetic writer and um, I try to keep as many of his words as I can since he's so eloquent. Um, he was not uh, all that much of a stickler for detail of driving directions and I got um, misplaced, finding enough of these trailheads. Uh, and prior to this, on many other books that I've used um, elsewhere, I had trouble with driving directions. So I've, I've resolved that my driving directions should be unambiguous. And I've tried my very best uh, to start at a freeway and then give specific mileages to every point, preferably marked with, with relationship to the mile markers on the side of the road. Um, so and then also give the GPS waypoints for the trailhead. And so there's multiple ways to find where you're going. Um, so I, I think that was an improvement I made. Then over the years, um, there have been a, a lot of trails that have uh, fallen into disuse or poor maintenance. And I've phased those out of a number of books. And um, a few new trails have been built or rebuilt. And um, a number of routes I think are just gems that haven't been in books. So for instance, in um, the Trails of the Angeles, I think it was uh, 14 hikes that I replaced from the previous edition um, with uh, 
different versions are, are new. Yes. Um, so I I drive to every trailhead, and um, I walk each trail unless I've walked it for another book in the recent trips. So I've just done um, a foot in the field Los Angeles County. So there were probably a third of the trails in uh, Crazy Los Angeles that I had been on recently, and I didn't need to rewalk. Uh, but otherwise, I walked them with GPS. Uh, until recently, I carried a camera, a compact, indestructible camera with Zoom. Um, and now I'm taking pictures on my iPhone, which seems to be just as satisfactory. Um, I try to get a bunch of pictures of different different things. Uh, my editors say people like uh, people pictures most. So try to get a diverse set of hiking partners and um, not all, all pictures of my kids. <laughs> I've been fortunate to have uh, a number of colleagues uh, who enjoyed a Thursday morning hiking club. We would leave town at 5 a.m. and to go do seven to 10 miles in LA County or the San Gabriel's and be back for the 11 a.m. faculty meeting. So we, we get a brisk walk in in the morning um, and get a lot of field work that way. Um, then I, I download my GPS data, uh, annotate my waypoints, I check all the mileages against the GPS data. Um, interesting thing on GPS is if I carry uh, GPS and my friend carries a GPS, they differ by up to 10%. If I carry two GPSs myself, they differ, sometimes more than 5%. Um, so there's a lot about um, just the noise in the receiver and the different post-processing of say a phone's GPS versus a Garmin GPS versus a different model of Garmin GPS. Um, so the, even the notion of absolute distance out here is uh, surprisingly, uh, well, surprisingly uh, arguable. Um, then um, I do research um, on uh, other hiking sites, on anything I can find from uh, official Forest Service publications. It's very hard to find from the Forest Service these days even what the regulations are and where you need a um, adventure pass or not. They're very quiet about the fact that you don't need an adventure pass uh, to park outside of the picnic areas if you don't use the facilities. And they don't even seem to know the rules themselves often. Um, many of these trails, I get great feedback from the rangers or the land managers. Um, and that's been really helpful on a lot of trips. Uh, national forests have been stretched so thin um, that in 16 years of doing this, I don't think I've received yet one review from an actual um, government employee at the Forest Service. Um, but I've received a number of useful reviews from uh, volunteers uh, associated with the Forest Service. Any okay. other questions? Well, thank you, David. That was a great talk. We appreciate your uh, doing this for us. Um, learned some interesting things. And David, we sure would love to have you join us on some of our upcoming hikes. We're hoping to open and uh, get going later this year um, if COVID cooperates. But <laughs> love to to have the benefit of your knowledge if if you have time to join some of us and and many of our hike leaders uh are extremely experienced but we we'd love to have your perspective as well so uh thank you so much what a wonderful talk and your book is fabulous i love this book and it, i wish i had the time to go through it hike by hike um it, it, how do you recommend people go through your books from from one to the end or or skipping around or how how would you uh, uh, suggest that people go through your guidebooks? Uh, every everybody's different about what they're looking for. Uh, when I was in my twenties, I bought Robinson's edition here, 
and I started with all the hikes that were uh, the longest ones and one of the physical challenge. And um, then uh, with kids, I look for the ones that are most friendly for the kids. So um, it was five to eight miles for a while. And then I worked up that I could carry a kid for 10 miles. And then I had two kids to carry and I was back in the five mile territory. And then when I had the third kid, we uh, moved over to mountain biking for a while where the oldest one could ride his bike downhill. And uh, one of them could sit on my bike seat and one of them could ride on my bike. And we would very slowly and carefully pedal down <laughs> a three to five mile trail in Orange County to uh, the beach. And then we'd catch the bus back to our car. And those were great days. Um, and, uh, some people are into the wildflowers. I've come to appreciate that more and more every spring. And I like, I actually like the trails in the areas that burned a few years ago because the wildflower booms can be incredible. Um, and uh, when I'm going with friends or family, again, it, it depends on what they like. So um, a lot of these trails, some of them are better in the warm season, the high country. Um, some of them are better in the cool season. Sometimes you're looking for something you could do after work. And sometimes you're looking for a long day on the weekend. Um, so I think the nice thing about covering all 100 hikes in the San Gabriels is whatever you're looking for, there'll be several things that fit that bill. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. I really enjoyed the diversity of the hikes that you picked. Um, I think you picked some really, really good hikes showing uh, great diversity within our area. We are so fortunate to live where we do. We, I can't think of a place in the country that has a greater variety of amazing hiking. Well, uh, on behalf of the committee, David, thank you for your time. What a splendid talk. And we, we hope you can come back and do more uh, in the future. But uh, what just a delightful uh, summary uh, of your favorites and, and good, uh, good tips. So, so thank you. Well, thank you. I look forward to uh, hiking with some of you. Right. right. Good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, John, why don't we, um, and Carla, why don't we just mention uh, our next uh, trail talk is going to be back on the third Wednesday of the month uh, in September. So that will be uh, September the 15th, uh, 7 p.m. It will be uh, Backpacking 101. I'm hoping to um, encourage people from our student population through uh, our really experienced hikers to maybe grab a pack again or grab a pack for the first time and start on some uh, simple backpacks and we can uh, work our way up. But I, I think we have so many areas where we can try um, really straightforward one night backpacks to get, get into the swing or get back into the swing. Um, so we're gonna be doing a backpacking 101 uh, in mid-September. Uh, and then we're going to be having um, uh, a staff member from the Catalina Island Conservancy come in mid-October for the October Trail Talk, and that will be on October the 20th on uh, the Trans-Catalina Trail and what to expect. So those are two upcoming, and then we're hoping to have John and uh, Mule Packs at some point uh, later this year, early next. Uh, he's just come back from a delightful Mule Pack, and... Uh, I think we'll have uh, some other programs as well for later in the year. Sounds good. Yes, thank you everybody for uh, listening in and, and, uh, and hearing what David had to say. Yes. The, the highest number I saw was 51 participants. Did anybody happen to see something higher than that? No, I think that's what I saw, delightful, just yeah. delightful. And uh, 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 I, I think that's a really robust number considering it's August and it's vacation month. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't mention to David, the, the time I met him was on a Sierra Club hike to Bonita Falls, which ah. is 
a very short hike, but very rocky. It's not an established trail. You're walking up the, the Lytle Creek wash with lots of rocks and a couple stream crossings. And he had two kids at that point. He was carrying one of them who was, I would guess, uh, maybe two or three. <laughs> And the other one was, I think, a five-year-old, and, and he was just all over the place, very agile, and uh, it was a delight to hike with them. <laughs> so much fun, and fun to see someone uh, doing family hiking and, and uh, uh, not, letting it, not letting it phase him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Norm, I got your I got your text about Chad Hansen, and yes, we will be inviting him to to speak on forests. Um, thank you so much for um, your suggestion, Norm Bossom. Wrote a very nice text about a possible topic coming up. So so thanks, Norm. You're welcome. And anybody else who has ideas or contacts, uh, feel free to suggest. Yes, we're always looking for ideas. Yes, and this is a community forum. So let's let's uh, do a trail talk on what people are interested in. So I think that's completely appropriate and, and delightful. So, so please do. So I, with that, I, I think it's probably a good point for us to wrap up. Yep. We're right at your clock. Yep. Thank you, folks. Okay. Thank you all. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Okay, I need to stop the recording. <laughs> uh, let's see.